welcome back. Thanks for being here again today. Today I want to talk to you about more of the ancient mystery religions of Greek and Rome. And today the Eleusinian mysteries. These are the mysteries that deal with the goddess Demeter and her daughter Persephone. More about that myth in just a minute. These were uh, initiation mysteries that were held every year in the cult of Demeter and Persephone based in, in the sanctuary of Eleusius in ancient Greece. These are the most famous of all the mystery religion rites. The rites and ceremonies and rituals were kept secret and consistently preserved from antiquity. We still know really very little about these rites. Now, the mysteries are related to a myth concerning Demeter, who is the goddess of agriculture and fertility. And we know about this from one of the hymns of Homer, the Homeric hymns, um, this one from 650 BC. According to the hymn, uh, Demeter's daughter Persephone was seized by Hades, the god of the underworld, who had fallen in love with her. And he took her to the underworld to live with him. Demeter, her mother, was distraught. And in her distress, she applied to Zeus for the return of her daughter. But because she was distressed and distraught, this brought famine to the earth. People were starving and dying, and there was not enough food to sacrifice to the gods. So Zeus, oppressed by the cries of the hungry people and by the other deities who also heard these people crying, he was forced to um, have Hades return Persephone. However, it was a rule of the fates that anyone who had entered the underworld and eaten the food of the underworld would have to remain there for eternity. So before Persephone was released to Hermes, who had been sent to bring her forth from the underworld, Hades tricked her into eating some pomegranate, pomegranate seeds, and those forced her to return to the underworld for some months of the year. She was obliged to return to Hades either four or six months out of the year, depending on the way that the myth is told, and then could live above ground with her mother for the rest of the year. This long period of time where Demeter was unhappy due to Persephone's absence, she neglects cultivating the earth. But when Persephone is returned to the surface, Demeter becomes joyful and cared for the earth again. So Persephone is said to stay in Hades during the winter and return in the spring. This is the day, the day of Persephone's return, that is at the very beginning of a bountiful springtime. Persephone's rebirth is symbolic of the rebirth of all of the plant life in the spring and is the symbol of eternal life that flows from the generations that spring from each other. So one theory under consideration by modern scholars 
has been that the mysteries were intended to guarantee eternal life to the participants, that they made a person, uh, elevated a person above the human condition and through their mysteries made that person into a god so that immortality was bestowed upon him. To participate in the mysteries, a person had to take a vow of secrecy and could never divulge what was done or said there. There were four categories of people who participated. The first were the uh, priests and priestesses and hierophants, those who organized and ran the ritual. And then there were the initiates who were undergoing initiation for the first time. Then there were others who had already been initiated, had attended at least once. And finally, there were those who were called the contemplatives who understood the deeper mysteries of uh, Demeter. Now the priesthood officiating at the mystery ritual uh, was divided into several different levels and offices. Most of them were women, but there were a few men in minor roles. There were actually six divisions in this priesthood at um, the uh, Demeter Sanctuary. Now there were two mysteries held each year, the lesser and the greater. And it's believed that the lesser mystery described or in some way portrayed the life of a soul within the body. And the greater mystery spoke of spiritual existence, the release of the soul from the body into the spiritual realm, a realm higher than the human, um, the human condition. Well, the um, lesser mysteries took place in about February, and it was at this first mystery where the initiates went through their ceremony and became official. The second, the great mystery, took place at harvest time in either September, October, around that time. And this one lasted for 10 days. And this one was held in the city of Eleusis, even after 600 BC, when that territory had been annexed to Athens and was considered an Athenian territory. The mystery that lasted these 10 days began in Athens for the first couple of days, but then there was a procession to Eleusis. It began at uh, Keramicus, which was an Athenian cemetery, and from there the people walked to the city of Eleusis along what was called the Sacred Way. And there were other shrines and stopping points along the way that honored additional gods in the Greek and Roman pantheon. Upon reaching Eleusis, there was an all-night vigil, and this may have been to demonstrate the time when Demeter was searching for her lost daughter. At some point during this vigil, the initiates drink a special drink that is, um, it is called kaikian, and it is made from barley and pennyroyal. And there's been much speculation about this drink. Because uh, traces of the fungi ergot have been found in the temple at the remains of the temple, temple at, at Eleusis, um, it is speculated that the barley that was used in the drink was barley that had been infected by the fungi ergot. This is a fungi containing LSD-like psychedelic alkaloids, so it causes 
psychedelic hallucinations. And um, in a site that was excavated in Garona, Spain, it provided some legitimacy for this theory because fragments of this fungi were discovered there. And also ergot fragments were found inside a vase and in the dental calculus of a 25 year old. And this provided evidence that ergot was being consumed. And so this sort of supports this theory that it was an ingredient in the drink that the initiates took. Well, after this vigil, they enter into Hellesterion. It is the temple itself, in the center of which is a palace, a place that only the priests can enter and that held the sacred objects. It's supposed that the rites in this temple comprise three elements. First would be what's called things done. That is a telling or a reenactment, a play presenting the Demeter Persephone myth. And then there would be things shown. That is the priests would, or and priestesses would show to the initiates and the others there, the sacred objects that were stored hidden in the temple area. And finally, the things said would be the explanation of the myth and also the explanation of what these sacred objects symbolized. Combined, these three elements were known as the unrepeatables, and you could not divulge them on the penalty of death. Well, when um, Christianity became more popular in the fourth and fifth centuries, the uh, Eleusius mysteries began to lose their prestige and they began to fade away. Then the Roman Emperor Theodosius I closed the sanctuaries by decree during what was known as the perse persecution of pagans in the late Roman Empire in uh, 392 AD. And the last remnants of the mysteries were wiped out in the year 396 when Arian Christians under Alaric, the king of the Goths, destroyed and desecrated the old sacred site. Well, thanks for watching again this time. I hope you enjoyed our look into the people who participated in the Lucinian cult in the early uh, years of the Greek and Roman cultures. If you enjoy this type of video, I hope you'll subscribe, check the notification button, and don't hesitate to leave your comments and questions. I try to upload each Saturday, so I hope you can join with me again soon. Again, thanks so much for watching and supporting this channel.